The situation in West Asia has uh, deteriorated dramatically. Uh, G20 members on the whole uh, welcomed the understanding which has been reached on the release of hostages, uh, on the flow of relief material to Gaza. Uh, there was a strong sentiment uh, expressed by the leaders to ensure uh, implementation of the commitments which were agreed to at uh, New Delhi. Today's virtual G20 summit, which was chaired by the Prime Minister, has concluded uh, just a little while ago. All 21 members of the G20, uh, including the AU, uh, the nine guest countries and 11 international organizations participated in the meeting. The discussions were fruitful, they were very productive. All leaders congratulated Prime Minister on a successful steering of India's G20 presidency. Uh, let me uh, set out uh, uh, the context for the virtual G20 summit. Uh, as you're all aware, the New Delhi Leaders Summit saw the unanimous uh, adoption of the New Delhi Leaders Declaration. Now, at its closing session, Prime Minister had suggested to G20 leaders that we could uh, reconvene virtually at the end of November to look at suggestions and proposals made at the September summit by participating leaders and also to review summit outcomes and accelerate progress on them. Uh, secondly, the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting was held uh, in Marrakesh on, uh, in October, in mid-October. Uh, after the New Delhi summit, uh, it achieved some very notable outcomes on MDB reforms and other important areas of the finance track, uh, and the finance minister would be speaking about it. Uh, third, there have been major geopolitical developments in the last two and a half months since the New Delhi summit. Uh, and they obviously have consequences for global development and growth. The situation in West Asia has uh, deteriorated dramatically, uh, which has serious implications for the region and the world. And this has come on the back of the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, fourth, the outcomes of the second Voice of the Global South Summit, which uh, again you know was held only recently on the 17th of November, also fed into the uh, virtual summit deliberations. Now, in terms of what was discussed today, I would say mostly there were uh, progress on uh, the agenda of the uh, New Delhi summit. Uh, of course, uh, the, the two geopolitical issues uh, which came up in some, uh, the Middle East, West Asia, uh, Gaza situation came up in greater detail. Uh, to some extent, also the Ukraine conflict uh, and its consequences. Uh, uh, in terms of Prime Minister's uh, own remarks, I think uh, uh, that uh, you would have seen uh, it is already uh, in the public uh, domain. Now, uh, the virtual G20 summit, we believe, is very significant because uh, it is also the first gathering of world leaders after the outbreak of conflict in West Asia. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, many leaders spoke about it. Uh, and... Uh, the uh, uh, what we heard really were condemnation of terrorism, uh, expression of deep concern over the loss of civilian lives, uh, calls for extending timely and uh, adequate humanitarian assistance, not allowing the conflict to spread, uh, and uh, uh, to find a long-term solution for the Palestine issue. Uh, G20 members on the whole uh, welcomed the understanding which has been reached on the release of hostages uh, on the flow of relief material to Gaza uh, and some pause uh, in the fighting. So overall, uh, there was a strong sentiment uh, expressed by the leaders to ensure uh, implementation of the commitments which were agreed to at uh, New Delhi. Uh, Prime Minister Modi assured President Lula of Brazil of India's fullest support as Brazil takes over the presidency. Uh, we will be part of the G20 Troika. Uh, and uh, uh, together we will continue to take forward the outcomes achieved during our